This is episode 15 of the Podcraft Beer Show for October 26, 2020, part one of two of an interview with co founders Jeff and Mike of Burning Beard. Welcome to the Podcraft Beer Show for October 26. This is episode 15. I am Tech Guy Steve with today's intro for host Chris and Charlie. This is our first on-site interview with Jeff and Mike, the co-founders of Burning Beard Brewery in El Cajon, California. This is part one of two. Part one will be this week, and then the following Monday, which is November 2nd, will be pu- we will publish part two. Part one includes reviews of the following three craft beers from Burning Beard, where Vultures Fair, in praise of Bacchus, and Banksy. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, then head over to thepodcraft.com. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. So without any more delay, please enjoy this part one of two recorded on site with social distancing at The Burning Beard in El Cajon. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. Uh, we got Chris and Charlie. Uh, we're on site at Burning Beard Brewing Company with co-founders Mike and Jeff. Uh, today we're going to sample Cheers, a guys. couple of beers. Cheers. 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 Salute. Clink, clink. Mm. Yes. Big re-reached. There it is, Mike. So, Pierce, first up, we have uh, We're Vultures Fair. What, uh, what's the story here, Jeff? Oh, man. Uh, well, it's a, it's a German Pilsner, and we were doing what we like to do here, which is have fun with beer, mess around. We hadn't brewed a German Pilsner before. We'd really stuck with Normcore, which is more of a bohemian. There's a... a fine line between the two styles but it's a vast difference if you're a beer nerd look it up kids um so we, yeah we we dove into the the german style and i i think really i one we're it instantly became a cult classic around here because it was the beer that everybody behind the bar was drinking and everybody that was coming in was they were normcore fans. Everybody, everybody that comes to the beard has, has a normcore every now and again. And if you're a brewery in San Diego, it's not often that multiple pilsners will will share the board. But around Oktoberfest, uh, we we have elected to get weird and diverse, and and we take that opportunity every season and this was just one of those beers but as as we were all drinking it behind the bar turning the delinquents onto it which hopefully we'll talk about the the delinquents later it just it grew and grew and it it's one of those things like like the name of the beer it it was it's surprisingly clever and won't go away yeah it is awesome. I was super excited when I saw you guys post online that, that you guys were going to post your, your, or you guys said your upcoming Oktoberfest with, uh, Eagles, where Eagles, uh, Eagles Dare, Eagles Dare, where, um, where Vultures Fair, the, your Dortmunder, uh, the other, their fest beer. Um, phenomenal. But I, I, I raced out. This was the first beer I had here. Yeah. We um, ran over here with the Bratwurst it. Pizza. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> phenomenal. That was, awesome. <laughs> Dude, that, was, that was the extent of my Oktoberfest. So I was like, He's, I didn't even care that Oktoberfest is over at that point. I yeah. did it for me. <laughs> All Southern California recreate re- renditions of the Oktoberfest celebration, um, yeah. which actually was pretty cool. Like, we had a lot of people in here for that. Um, the brew gang does a tremendous amount of work to kind of get all of that beer staged and ready in time. There's a lot of timing that goes into the brew schedule to make sure that that stuff is ready uh, for the Oktoberfest season. So um, this beer certainly was part of that. Um, And because of its popularity, um, I think we can probably announce Mm -hmm. that there is a can currently being designed and approved uh, in which this beer will live in the future. Excellent. Which also means that this will probably be a more regular part of, of the beer lineup in the future. It was, you know, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen with, with the beer when we decided to make it, but 
um, I think we're all pretty stoked of how it turned out and that it'll kind of stay on. So It's a drinker. It recently yeah. won an award at the San Diego uh, International Beer Festival as well, correct? It did, yeah. It did. Yeah, we, we're very happy to, to have this beer recognized as we, we submitted a few things and of them, uh, we're, we're always happy to have anything Pilsner related win anything. Mm-hmm. We're always rooting for Normcore or, and, and we, we had sort of earmarked Pilsner and Wild Ale and we, and we happened to come up with one of each. So we're, we're very fortunate. Thankful. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's, that's phenomenal. It's so great beer. You, you, had, you had mentioned the, um, the the delinquents, mm-hmm. right? I think. Um, can you can you speak a little bit about the about the club, the the delinquents, um, and just how that that kind of uh, you know what that means to your brand, and and um, you know just speak to that. Well, uh, I'll, I'll let Mike pick that up in a second, but um, to just maybe redirect that that conversation just a little bit. It when we came up came up to actually formulating a business. One of the things that we really wanted to do is find a way to lasso our, our ethos, our personal point of view. And part of that was creating a, a pub like space where, where friends and family mem- members could hang out where, where we'd walk in that door. And it's, it's not just Norman Cliff that you know, it's literally everybody. And oddly, not oddly, it's, we we keep falling into success and the delinquents it's it's one of it's a testament to that so it, it wasn't a, a a brand course direction that created the delinquents it's more of a ethos about it that that's driven by who we are as people and what kind of business we wanted to have so it's it's not one of those we're not this giant club where we don't know the members. We're this weird little club where we hang out and eat chili together. And so that, that's, that's the framework for it. It's chili based. <laughs> <laughs> Most, a, a lot of Jeff's <laughs> life is chili based. Chili based. <laughs> so I, that I just happened to like find its way into the, into the, it, yeah. It the, just, the, I had it for breakfast. This is morning. it a beans yeah. or no bean chili? Yeah, it life. depends, man. I'm equal <laughs> opportunity. It's like beer, man. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, I actually, um, I, I came out the other day for, um, for a beer on a, on a Wednesday, I think, and, and ended up, there was, uh, the majority of the people outside were delinquents, and, uh, then they all got together and went to another brewery afterwards, right? Which was, so, so I. Tell I, me, I, give me their names, and we'll kick, yeah, the, kick them out <laughs> of the club. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so they, but it was wild to just watch, like, um, just kind of the impact and, and how you've brought that, that group of people that probably didn't know each other outside of like that that patio right and they're now just hanging out together i think yeah it's 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 pretty cool like it it is a part of the fabric of our of of the experience here so a lot of those delinquents are here pretty regularly and they have kind of forged those relationships with uh with within the the group itself and with the staff members um and really like the way that we think about it is everyone's kind of part of the story and so we wanted to bring as many p- people and folks and friends into that storytelling process and story creating process as possible. And I think that the delinquents club is a way to do that. Um, you know, it's all kind of laid out in the description of the club, uh, of what we're, what we, what we do and who we are. And, you know, if you want to, if you want to be a part of that, if, if, if you find yourself nerdy enough to be a part of that club, then by all means, we'd love to have you. Uh, we're not looking to knock the ball out of the park, generating massive amounts of profits or anything with this club. It's a very small club. We're at about 100 members. And because of that, we can be pretty intimate and pretty close. We can have pretty cool events where people come and uh, people know each other's name, like Jeff was talking about with the cheers metaphor. Um, and it, yeah, it's just a fun club where people can kind of get together and it's it's almost... it's 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 part um yeah it's part social club part beer drinking club and just kind of all around good time well, that, that that tends to, to lean towards i mean you guys are have a delinquents group and uh these members are you know diehards for you guys and uh what's interesting is that you've been blessed with a lot of success here i mean you are the brewery of east county i mean i i can say that with without any doubt that you know if people are coming to be, drink beer, they're coming here to drink beer in East County. I mean, there's a few other ones around, but this is one where people congregate. And, you know, that's 
that's told by a line out the door right now, mm-hmm. you know, of people drinking your beer. So that's, that's huge. I mean, those people are real true, you know, members and not only members, but friends. So yeah, absolutely. That, that is the, that is the, the thing that when the like, beer makes friends, right. Yeah. And, uh, it, there are all sorts of the spectrum of life and all of the experiences. It's, it's so vast, but we get to narrow it down with, with this and we get to come hang out and it's, it's a, it actually, if, if you had the vultures can in front of you, you would, you would know where I was going with this, but it, it's, we'd have discourse and dialogue and, and we get to have fun and there's, Lots of elbows, lots of ribbon, and lots of really good and bad jokes. And uh, you know, we're we're putting together an event for disc golf. I don't know, we're like I, I don't. There will be probably like ten or twenty people out there, and it's it's more the events and and the. Were you here for the Burns dinner? I, did I see you? No. Oh man. So more most of the events that we do are, are it's really it's just like the brewery. It's, we just wanted to do this and we want other people to do it with. We're going to, we want to play disc golf. Let's go hang out and play disc golf. And so we throw a thing on our Facebook page. Who wants to play disc golf? And people raise their hands and we go and hang out and play disc golf. You know, it's that, that's our club. So if, if you like disc golf, join us. Yeah. Or if you have any like 16 foot two by fours need hauled from Home Depot, you post the delinquents club <laughs> or, and some guy with a flatbed says, yeah, I can help you this morning and they an show hour. up. Yeah. And that happened today. So <laughs> it's like, good. you know, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It, <laughs> uh, it was unique hanging out. I, I hung out with those guys last, last week or a uh, week and a half ago. It was, it was uh, it's a unique, unique group of guys. You guys in this room, you guys were doing comedy club uh, once a month, right? And yeah. Those were selling out pretty quickly. A lot of that was driven by your delinquents. Mm, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I, not necessarily. I mean, the idea was was uh, brought, it was brought up by a guy that actually had his band had played our anniversary party. Right. And uh, it just so happened that it ended up being this weird delinquent sort of speakeasy. Not speakeasy in the sense that... It's this, you know, bookshelf, Scooby-Doo bookshelf, but uh, more of the people who were going and buying tickets, it, the the word of mouth spread quickly among delinquents that you don't want to miss this. Right. And it, it took off like wildfire and went nuts. And then like everything else, COVID kicked it in the nuts. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's done that to everything. We still yeah. do the other comedy club in the other side of the brewery. That, that's where we brew the beer. <laughs> that's where the yeah, funny that. stuff happens. <laughs> and with with uh, it's uh, what do they call it when it's uh, off the cuff? I mean, it's everything's. Uh, gosh, I can't even think of the word. Thank spontaneous. You. Yeah, spontaneous. You know, or it's good segue into our wild ale bit. There you uh, go. We were just going to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> spontaneous. Just let it happen. Yeah, oh, yeah, we have. <laughs> they're making it's, it's some sort of signal hand signals i don't know what it is yeah <laughs> yeah i mean if you want to throw one of those uh right there That's a good, yeah yeah pair well pair is not focus i don't think well tell us about your yeast your house yeast oh man uh well which one uh, i mean the i the one you well you heard me ask it earlier but the sure uh, the thing that came you came back to this country with well that 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 is actually a long and uh, winding road. Intri- interesting, maybe to three or four people out there. Story where so I went to Belgium for a trip and I was hanging out, hanging out. Right, I'm drinking beer at Cantillon. Oh, um, terrible! Yeah, they just <laughs> invited me out. You know, they s- actually to to buy beer and I bought it. And um, then I went on the self guided tour and. Standing on that deck, if you've been to Cantio and you're overlooking the cool ship, there just happened to be some, some rotted wood that had fallen. And, and I recall hearing the story of Tommy Arthur and, uh, Vinny, um, how they, they had scraped some of that wall and, and brought the wood home and inoculated a few batches with that. And I, I did do that as well. Um, so we have that in what might be called, uh, let's see here. Try to we have we have a naming scheme that is complex, to say the least. 
So we have just to work backwards. We have we have a cool ship, 100% spontaneous. There's nothing pitched in that at all. We also have a uh, yeast strain that was the product of a cool ship night in my backyard. So I I, I did a homebrew cool shipped overnight and it ended up tasting amazing. We saved that yeast, sent it to White Labs. That is our house culture. And then we had another one that we uh, we actually we had dosed with some of the dregs from a homebrew with that wood from Cantillon. And that, that actually, it, it tasted amazing. It was uh, one of those things where I didn't know too much about, I actually, I knew nothing about what was in there. I just threw the wood in my, in a barrel that I'd, I'd gotten from another home brewer from Quaff and it went nuts and tasted lovely. Wow. And so it's, it's part of, yeah, definitely part of the fabric and it's hitching our, our wagon to the star of our, our predecessors and the, those people, they knew a lot, but it's, it's kind of like Tommy and Vinny following in their footsteps, but also, you know, we're not, we're, what we're trying to do is emulate what they're doing in Belgium with, with our cool ship. So we're not, we're not pitching any yeast at all. What we, what we did is we took the, the strain that was cool shipped in my backyard and sprayed that on the walls of the shed that encloses the, the cool ship. So if, if there is the, the proper precipitation from the knockout, it is entirely possible that that precipitation will pull out from the wood those, that bacteria. I don't, if there's any yeast living in that, I don't know. But we ended up with what, what ended up being in praise of Bacchus and we love it. It's, it ended up taking third at SDIBF behind Beechwood and Firestone Walker. So it, uh, I made the comment that that bronze feels like gold to me. Because yeah, right. Yeah. Those those heavy hit companies. Companies. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, that, you know, uh, the nose the to- on there is amazing. Totally heavy hitters. But yeah, Ooh. so we're, we're fortunate to, to have a few different things going on. Wow. That smells fantastic. Roast. Yeah. Salute, so guys. Uh, in, in praise of Bacchus. I don't know yet. This is pear. Oh, it's pear. Oh. So we have, uh, this would be a blend of our cool ship and Brulanta Meteo, which oh. is our, our house strain, that one I was telling you about. Can you say Canty alone? And then, uh, and then oh. this was rested on wow. local pears from uh, Star Bee Ranch. And they, okay. they used to do uh, a lot of, a lot of, wet hops that started mm-hmm. be and and bison we haven't yet um worked with the bison but we hope to yet? Yeah, no we haven't <laughs> We're, we hope to though that that smells wow amazing. i mean i can uh. so the so with the you know with the cool ship in the wild i mean you're sitting in a, in a room with 90 or you know close to 100 barrels here mm-hmm. is the intention to are these are these holding uh uh sours or or what are we Yes. So what we have here is a lot of what's in this room is first gen attempts. So they aren't necessarily presentable as solitary barrels, but they're really good as blenders. And we have some, we we have our first cool ship runnings here. So that was two years ago. We're going to cool ship again this year and we will have what hopefully will be a pretty decent uh, goose blend coming up next year. So if for those, may, I, we've never sold out of a bottle. We're, we're like the best kept secret in El Cajon. So we're, uh, the secret I, is tell everybody everyone's keeping yeah, that like, secret. I'm making a prediction right now on this one. And if you're going to bottle it, <laughs> it's, it's already bottled, man. Trust me. No one's that, bought it. That's, it's still available. <laughs> I thought the same thing with Songs of Orpheus, which uh, I think was one of your guys' first bottles that you guys... Yeah. That's uh, our, I thought that's, everybody slept on that. Oh, that was they did. like unbelievable. It was so good. 
Yeah. Uh, so I was stacking bottles of that. I, I mean, do you have any? I, I think I, I will may follow have you one home. Left. Uh, that that is our, our tribute to Orval. And as that, if I could have predicted, it's like my teeth. Had I known that I'd live this long, I would have taken better care of it. <laughs> I, I drank all those bottles, man. And I wish I still had them. And I don't. The last one I had, I I shared with a uh, a brewer of ill repute in San Diego. And I'm I'm second guessing that choice. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was so, so good. So that's the Teal bottle. Right? Yeah, it was oh, okay, phenomenal. Okay, I have one of those. Oh, man. <laughs> I have one so of good. those. Uh, yes. Treat yourself. Yeah. Now, I mean, I I don't really pop big bottles unless there's several people around. So. Yeah. I mean, it was so I good. I could. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah, there there will never be enough of that bottle. There, there's We have the second phase, and, uh, you know, Mike and I, still, we haven't discussed yet when we're going to release that bottle. But it's it's sitting in the wild room conditioning. It's ready to go. This is phenomenal. And we have that sitting next to which is Dig Lazarus Dig. I don't know if either of you have had that yet. But that was um, it was Chris's we, starter beer. Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh. it was phenomenal. Super, thank you, thank you. Tasty. So that we we had done in uh, you know sort of a collab with Missioneros and South Park. Missioneros uh, Jeff Crane, who was formerly the Wild Ale guru of uh council mm-hmm. he he loaned us a couple of vials of some some homegrown yeast strains and we took song of orpheus and and rebrewed it pitched it in these barrels with his yeast strain and we ended up with what is a crazy it's it's once again it's like it's like the dividing line between bohemian pilsner and german pilsner but if if you are a guy who who t- who likes these kind of beers, You, it's like night and day. One is peach and peach skin, and the other one is apricot. You're like, all right, what's the difference between the two? I don't know, man. You have to drink them both side by side, and you will know You will know that there is a difference. Yeah. And it is amazing. I, I love it. And somehow Song of Orpheus also shines with this crazy stor- stone fruit barnyard – horse leather it's it's weird and it's awesome i don't know i love it i couldn't believe they um I, yeah i picked some like it sat it sat out there for a while i i was amazed when i when i came back after i had popped my first bottle like i had had it on tap bought a couple bottles came back it was i couldn't i couldn't believe it like um i felt like everybody slept on that beer yeah they did that that one it's, it's it's our one bottle that sold out, though. I mean, it's, it's because of time, right? It was our first one released. It's gone. Well, all of our other bottles are still here. There's going to be a day. And it reminds me of when we were in San Francisco for, for, for San Francisco Beer Week. And Mike and I walked into Cellar Maker at like 11 a.m. And we're like, we look around. And, Dude, 11 a.m. on a Saturday, Cellar Maker is full. Packed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And today... When we have a line out the door, I'm like, man, almost. <laughs> but the, we're like, we're we're knocking on the door. It's a journey, you know? though. It is a it's journey. journey. And it's, it's not about getting the space full. It's about earning the right to have your space full. Yeah. And I think we're doing that. I think you're definitely doing that. We're, we're trying really hard. This, with this right here, If I mean, you can just pour this down my throat. I'll lay on the counter and I'll sit in there with this. <laughs> That's how good that is. That's an expensive date. <laughs> and I'm not easy, so. <laughs> so. Speaking of San Francisco and, and, and beers up there, you guys, um, so Tornado's 30th anniversary a couple of years ago, Toro, San Diego, you guys were a young brewery, uh, but you were one of 30 breweries that had a beer up there. Like, how did, how did that end up happening? There was, like, some unbelievable, <laughs> like, people that had been around forever, right? Like, right. Yeah. like v- Vinny's in there making their 20th anniversary beer. You know, so it, was, they, it was Festival I, of Dankness. I, I still have a bottle. I, I picked up a bottle of the, uh, what's it called? The uh, cable car. Oh, yeah. From that that uh, event. I still got it in my We were at, my we were cellar, at but yeah. uh, Festival of Dankness. Yeah. And the, and the manager, of, manager of Tornado, San Francisco happened to walk into our booth and he's like you guys are amazing you need to be at our festival you need to be at our, you need to be on tap now how do we make this happen i think mike had made the connection with chad up there and and it's we forged a really good friendship and uh he's like anything you guys do let me know and we'll we'll hook it up 
did a special brew of like some hazy IPA named after a Bowie song. Um, that was awesome. Uh, Faces in Golden Rays, I think is what it was called. But more interesting than that was uh, GABF two years ago. We were at True Brewing. We walk into True Brewing and Chad and Big Daddy from Tornado are playing dice at the table. And they're like, all right, guys, you want in? And we're like, yeah, we want in. So we're like playing, playing for money. We're playing for pink slips. And I lose my ass instantly. This guy, I don't know, man. Do not gamble when he's sitting at the <laughs> table. He, he could not lose. Yeah. And I... <laughs> We took all their money and then we took their concert tickets. So, yeah, it turned out to be a pretty good night. It was a great night. So, but here's the thing. I'll tell you in a second. So, I walked away from the table and next door is this really cool, like, I don't know what it, what it is. It's, it's like a secondhand store. You buy lots of denim and albums. And so, Shannon and I, uh, Shannon Lynette, our taste room manager, um, she and I went record shopping while Mike stood and ran the table. He literally took all their money, <laughs> and some guys like, all right, his last bet was, I got these concert tickets. He threw them on the table. Mike won them. We went to the show that night. It was Paul Bearer. I don't know if you guys know Paul Bearer, but they're they're like Doom Sludge. They're awesome. Their new album just came out two days ago. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a great night. So after that, after literally... Almost winning the entire brewery, or the, the, the brewery, the bar. I, I I don't know why we stopped at concert tickets. We should have put the bar on the we table. We should have put yeah. the bar on the table. We could have walked away with True. But it was uh, Mike, Shannon, me, Tom Nickel, went to Paul Bearer, watched the show, afterwards met the band. It was an amazing night. It was awesome. great. It was it was kismet. That is awesome. Yeah, it that's was great. a story. That's a story. Like JBF, that's, that's the type of thing that happens at JBF, and you end up with these weird dive bars. Um, unfortunately, all of that didn't happen this year because, you know, the word ceremony was the only thing that was kind of that we were able to participate in, except for Jeff was there as a judge. So he was, um, judging for the second year, I think, mm -hmm. to kind of do some judging and everything. So yeah, JBF, it's a great time. Have you been, guys been out to that before? I haven't. This, uh, this year I had kind of thought about it. Next year, I, I guess. was going to catch you on the yeah. trail camping and then ride down into Denver. Is that? Yeah, that was that was. I was really looking forward to that. So last year I did that. Like before GBF, Jeff was judging. I think we passed and we year. crossed. We crossed in the Rockies. I did yeah. a couple nights uh, up in the Rockies while uh, Jeff was in town, and then Shannon came into town, and we did the did the festival. And I was really looking forward to getting back up on the trail this year. Oh yeah. And then COVID kicked us in the nuts. COVID. We should just but get hey. rid of that completely right now. Right. Just write it off. <laughs> absolutely if if i don't know if, if beer could cure it it'd be gone because i'm drinking plenty of it mm. yeah no, but it's good so cheers cheers gracias gracias cheers cheers salad i've drank a lot of these beers and that right there is legit mm. i don't i mean thank you that's the best thing i've ever tasted you guys made oh get out of here seriously <laughs> and i like all your beers i mean I mean, some of the dark stuff I haven't tasted because it's a little rich for me. But, I mean, this right here, hmm. that's phenomenal. Well, I'm, I'm glad you like it. Uh, I'd be interested to know what you think of uh, the the Dig, Dig Lazarus bottles. They'll be out shortly. Well, I'm uh, loading up before I go. Don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Well, they, they, they ain't out yet, buddy. Um, oh, I, gotta I, pay. I believe it's a uh, Sabado. Uh, what is it? What is that? Sabado de, la, de los Muertos. Yeah. So, we'll have a bottle release then. And then shortly after, I think... So we want we want the two different versions of Dig to come out along with Song of Orpheus, and then uh, two different barrel numbers. Oh, right. Okay. So I'll just buy cans today, and I'll come back for that. Yeah, you'll Deal. you'll want to do that because, <laughs> man, I, I'm telling you, it's 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 one of those things where the it's so interesting to see what what each barrel is doing, well, and yeah, it's, you know, it's weird. I've been here for how many years you've been? Five? Four Coming up on our fifth year. Yeah. Okay, so I've been here for three of the four anniversaries. And you guys always come out with something really, really different for those. Right. And always good. But those Berliners were amazing. Mm -hmm. But the this is like another level, though. 
seriously. We're, we're building up. I mean, it's we're, we're kind of following the trajectory. If you remember before society had a wild program, you know, you have to, it's, it's kind of, it takes a while to build up the traction for it. It's not, and I don't mean online Instagram traction. It, it's, it's yeast. It takes a while to develop that flavor. It might be analogous to conditioning a skillet, right? Okay. You can't just buy a skillet. It's not ready to go. You cook on it a few times and you build up this, take some flavor. Seasoning. Seasoning. Exactly. So that's, that's really what we're doing. And that's, that's kind of where I was going with these barrels. The first gen, they're not, a few of them we, we've earmarked for interesting single barrel, single barrel bottling. If we hopefully if we get around to it, and there are a few that we've we've gotten to that'll be awesome blenders. They have they have some character that that we want in a beer, but they're they don't have enough of a of a full range of of flavor to to deliver what we want in a beer. So it's. That that is literally, that's it. It well, took us a little while to to build up to it. I'm telling you, this is. I mean, this is on the level of uh, Casey side project. This is this is a level that this beer. Is, oh, thanks. I'm serious. I, I'm super impressed. Uh, I mean, we, I don't get easily impressed by. We hardly did anything. We just put pears in it. That's it. The yeah. pears are the right flavor. We didn't even then. grow them. So who's, uh, it so is delicious. How many breweries in town utilize a cool ship? Like who's all uh, uh, who's now? All I believe there are two. I, it depends on it depends on your definition of a of a cool ship. Um, if if you are a traditionalist, it's a copper lined, shallow bathtub. But the the vessel that we grain out into, which is it's kind of like a a fruit tote. A lot of people just use that, which is like this weird 48 by 48 by 48 box. Yeah. And they'll knock out into that, let it sit out. And if you're familiar with Black Project mm-hmm. out in yep. uh, Colorado, right? Absolutely. So uh, that guy, you know, he, he kind of did what, what I was talking about earlier, just setting a mash down in my backyard. He set one on his roof and ended up with, I, I believe it was a gold medal winning beer. I don't know. Wow. And, you know, so I'm not, it's not so much the vessel you're, you're working with a classic example in San Diego is automatic brewing, right? If you, if you've ever seen the setup that Lee Chase is working on at automatic, it's, it's really just a sort of Frankenstein homebrew setup and you can make some really good beer on that. It's, it just depends on, it depends on. I, maybe maybe it depends on the people, the environment. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the music you play. Probably has some good music. Yeah. It's pretty good. Super impressed. Not enough Thin Lizzy though. <laughs> What's next on the uh, on the menu? I think we're gonna do maybe a bank new damage C ESB mm-hmm. or new damage. Oh sure, either one. Let's bring them both Here, out. Yeah. Yeah. Just do them side by side. We'll run through them. Trust okay. me. <clears throat> Do we sit in awkward silence while he's gone? Or no, do we, we can do totally we talk. talk yeah. Okay, we can talk about him. So yeah, let's talk about that that ESB Banksy. Sure. I mean, I, I think um, yeah. What's uh, I mean, it's amazing. First, thank of all. you. It's uh, that's probably my favorite beer that you guys make. That's my go to. Oh, when awesome. I walk in here, I'm like, uh, give me a Banksy or a Normcore. Right. Is my uh, uh, the other one that I hit on, but the um, it's not a whole lot of breweries I, I think in San Diego that. M- make an esb i mean i can't think of one that that i, I mean i guess ailsmith right with uh oh, with anvil, yeah. right but right. I, I don't like i don't go into ailsmith to get a mm. to get an anvil right, right. so um well, that's like, a, it's a traditional english style beer right right we're trying really and hard you spent some time there i did i did i went to school there uh honeymoon there i love it england's an awesome place well i mean i'm a big fan of esbs i even actually made some hmm one time, and the reason I like it is it's because it's it's so filling. You're getting all the flavor in the world in that beer, and I just I love it. I mean, it was like a meal when you're eating, you're right? Drinking it. Right. Yeah. You know the, the the thing about it, it, it's when I don't know if you guys remember Manzanita when Manzanita <laughs> yeah. was here. 
So when that play, it literally went out of business. I don't know, like the same month we got into business, which was, you know, fortunate for us, but unfortunate because they had trained their customers a certain way. And they, they were coming in here asking for an amber ale and we were being very, very militant about our style guidelines. Like we don't have any amber ales. People were literally leaving because there was no amber ale. But I mean, it, in ESB, it's it's an amber ale. It's got a little more bitterness. The you know the title ESB harkens to the the bitterness. It's all relative though. Extra special bitter, but it's about maybe forty IBU, which is on the scale of a low end of a San Diego Pale Ale, maybe. It's a hazy level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is also a hazy IPA level. Uh, maybe double a hazy. It depends on who's making it. Oh, that's great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chug this beer so I can make some room in my glass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill it dirty because that's how I roll. I hope you enjoyed the first part of our Burning Beard on-site interview. Tune in next week for the rest of that discussion and for the final three beers reviewed. One of them is super special. To subscribe, get links, see pictures, and to connect to the podcast via email, then head over to thepodcraft.com for all that info. Please also consider recommending the podcast to craft beer friends and family members in your lives. This has been Tech Guy Steve for the Podcraft Podcast. Have a great day. The PodCraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.